Cyclone Yazi made landfall at Mission Beach, northern Queensland. Waves as high as 12 metres hit the coast and the storm surge combined with a high tide to reach 5 metres above average. Wind gusts were estimated to have reached 285 kilometres per hour. The damage was massive. Mission Beach is 170 kilometres north of Townsville and 110 kilometres south of Cairns. Yazi threaded the needle. The purpose of this video is to simulate what would happen if a cyclone like Yazi didn't thread the needle, but came roaring in from the Coral Sea, aiming squarely at Townsville. It is also about how you can prepare your home, family and community for this possibility. One of the uh, most dangerous aspects of tropical cyclones is when they come ashore, they bring a mound of the ocean in with them. We call that uh, storm surge and on top of that, uh, we get waves that uh, crash on the coast. To demonstrate how a storm surge might affect a city like Townsville, CSIRO researchers have created a model that shows how fast water can move and how soon it reaches natural and man-made landscape features. This visualisation shows a four metre storm surge, the same as Cyclone Althea generated when it hit Townsville in 1971. It was the most intense cyclone to affect Townsville in modern record, causing three deaths and damage costs of $50 million, with 200 homes damaged or destroyed. In this scenario, the storm surge arrives at the same time as a two-metre high tide. You can see that large amounts of water are pushed fast towards the land. Water shaded in red is the fastest moving and water shaded in blue is moving the slowest. In this simulation, water enters the low-lying regions of Townsville City through the port of Townsville along Ross Creek and starts to spread through low-lying areas such as Townsville City, South Townsville, Town Common, Rose Bay and the Railway Estate. One of the early events uh, that caused a lot of loss of life was in 1896 in January when Tropical Cyclone Sigma uh, hovered around off, just offshore from Townsville and the wave action and the uh, storm surge there killed about 18 people. And bearing in mind, it was a pretty small town in those days. The worst recent cyclone that uh, has caused uh, damage from these effects was Cyclone Althea on Christmas Eve 1971. Althea hit towns at low tide, so uh, the ultimate, probably worst case scenario would be a Yasi cyclone hitting Townsville at high tide. Leading scientists are concerned that cyclone activity in the 20th century was relatively quiet in the Great Barrier Region. Professor Jonathan Knott and his team from James Cook University published a paper in the prestigious science journal Nature describing more frequent major cyclones prior to European settlement. The scenario modelled in this animation may be conservative. With the cyclones, obviously they come with a, a driving rain and a hammering wind that can last for several hours. So we have to make sure our houses are, are well prepared and able to shelter us in these really severe events. Just like we do, we look after our car, we get it serviced every couple of years. You know, we do the same things with our houses, like every five to seven years, get a builder in, get a building certifier in, have a look over your house, make sure there's no uh, loose roofing screws, make sure there's no corrosion rust in the roof or the, your tile clips are all correct and, and present, uh, that you know, we've got no termite damage, no rot in the timber. So, you know, all the components that are helping keep our houses strong. The most important thing is to ensure that you're up to date with messaging. That means that you've got to have a radio, batteries, and you listen to the emergency stations. Now during disasters, the ABC give regular reports. But if you haven't got a radio, how about making sure that your mobile phone has an app? Or follow Twitter or Facebook. Keep your family informed because the radio station will tell you when to evacuate, where to go, and the safest route. The second thing you need to do is to have a plan. A plan to tell you when you're going to evacuate, how you're going to evacuate, what you're going to take with you, because sometimes during a disaster, you're going to be in an evacuation centre for up to 24 hours. And the last thing is, have an emergency kit. And I think it is very important for all members of community across Queensland and beyond to actually start thinking about what they can do to prepare for disasters, to contact their local governments and local organisations to, to learn more about what they can do to assist others and indeed be very mindful that uh, disasters as they come are very, very dangerous. 
It is very important that every citizen in this country and in this state that's affected by disasters every year um, uh, uh, take serious measures in ensuring that their family is safe, their neighbors are safe, and that indeed they can actually do everything they can do to prepare right now. When a major weather event like a cyclone hits a populated center and you find yourself in the midst of it, do you know who's really gonna be there? You, with your family, your pets, maybe your neighbors, your local community. It's easy for us to imagine that someone will be there to protect us, and that will be the case in due course, but you may be there for 72 hours, for a week, for even two weeks. You may be without electricity, you may be without water. And uh, although we have this culture of you know, expecting things to come, we now have to rebuild the other Australian tradition, which is a culture of self-reliance, of getting ourselves through because we know how to prepare. Everybody knows that there's major events around the corner. It's just that nobody thinks they're gonna hit us. And we, we now need to wake up to the fact that they can and inevitably they will. But the important thing is start to do the planning now. It's too late to plan when the winds are swirling around and a Cyclone 5 category is heading at your house.